the NFL to Hollywood to fatherhood. Join me as I tackle my next journey in life, becoming Hollywood's next action star. Hello, hello. As the intro alluded to, I'm Miles Burris, retired NFL linebacker turned actor and I guess content creator now. Definitely a sloppy one. But this whole series is going to be um, about becoming, about going after your biggest goals, sticking your neck out there publicly while you do it, and burning the boats, really going after it. Um, so welcome. I hope you'll uh, subscribe on my journey to becoming Hollywood's next action star. And I say star not to be pretentious, but if you feel called to do something, you're gifted to do it. And you're going to make the sacrifice of chasing your dreams and going after something that's super statistically unlikely and unstable and risky and uncertain. Why would you not shoot for the absolute top? I got an NFL or bust mindset. I, I wasn't working uh, to go to the CFL and I wouldn't have settled for it. It's NFL or bust. So in Hollywood, I say star because that, that allows me to work on the best of the best projects. Um, you get to do it at the highest level. And that's the most important thing for me maximizing the potential, the gifts that God's given me, sharpening them into crafts, becoming a gift to him, and hoping, hoping to help others along the way. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping this will be a real look into an actor's life uh, on that pursuit that's um, you know, a working actor, but certainly not an A-lister. And so it's not gonna be the Hollywood version. It's not gonna be what they do, which is all about you know, branding and image manipulation. I'm going to show you uh, my highs and lows in real time. I'm going to take you with me in 2024. We're getting an early start right now into 2023. Uh, I'm going to take you with me to all my, my sets, um, uh, the projects that I'm shooting, show you my workouts, my auditions, um, my process and mindset, just my whole blueprint that I'm creating in real time. That's a never ending, you know, work in progress. Um, and doing that in hopes that it will give you hope to also go after the things in your heart and the dreams and the things that you know you're called to and give you uh, encouragement and, and boldness to do the same. Um, or at the very least, just help you in some small way. I'm going to cover a lot of stuff um, in my life. And uh, yeah, I hope it helps you. But I'm also doing this for me. You know, selfishly, I'd be, I'd be kicking myself later on down the line if I didn't document this process. I think it'd be really cool to look back on for myself, uh, my kids, and just to have it. And also, I know my tendencies to gain momentum in an area or a lot of areas and then, you know, get sick and be like, oh, I'll, I'll hit it once hard and dial it in perfectly once I get healthy and start again. Doing that even once or twice a year has kept me in a stasis in certain areas of my life. Um, and so for me, putting a camera in front of myself is a hack um, because you put a camera in front of just about anybody and they're going to do it, whatever they're doing to the best of their ability because they know people are watching. And so I'm hoping that um, this is going to build in an extra layer of accountability for me to just push play on my life and uh, take strong actions and give my all when I do them so that I can gain and keep momentum and let the compound effect take uh, action on my goals, my long-term visions. Also what you measure grows, you know, so you got these goals and you got these action outputs that you need to do to get there. You, if you measure those things statistically, you have a lot more progress. And then if you measure them and then report them to somebody else, your progress goes through the roof. And so that's what I'm going to be doing here with you. You're going to see all of my, my gains and losses and measure the progress in real time. And, um, share with you what I've learned because um, there's a lot of things that I relentlessly Googled, especially entering Hollywood, trying to find answers for and ask people about that I just couldn't find. And um, this industry generally has <laughs> an attitude of like holding things close to the vest and they say all the right things and you think they're your buddy, but they don't really give you any advice or anything actionable. Um, obviously there's, there's a lot of real ones within it, but generally people are, uh, not into helping you unless you can help them or your status is higher than theirs. And that's just not the way I play this, this, uh, this whole thing. That's not, I came from team sports where we're in it together. 
Um, so y'all are my team now, and I'm going to give you what I know, what I'm learning, uh, what I wish I would have known in, um, in a lot of areas, you know, physically, in um, the Hollywood industry, and, uh, you know, diet, and workouts, football, everything. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to do this thing. I think it's going to be good, uh, good for me, good for all of us. Uh, kind of the genesis of all of it was not being where I want to be in my career as an actor right now, knowing where I want to be in the long term. And it's like, I want to start doing that right now. Um, my career has definitely been trending up. I've got almost um, 20 credits or so in a, in a fairly short period of time for an actor. And, um, but I'm kind of a tweener in Hollywood. That's more of a football term. Uh, tweeners like say there's a safety and he's this big physical safety, but he's not quite fast enough or good enough in coverage to be elite, but he's not big or physical enough to bring down in the box as a linebacker. He's kind of in between these two positions. Like, where do we put him? I don't know. As some packages, maybe he can be safety and sometimes in certain packages or situations, we'll bring him down in the box, but he's never going to be your go-to guy. And so I'm understanding that's kind of where I'm at right now in my journey as an actor, um, where at this phase in my career, obviously I'm a big guy, but I'm not Dwayne Johnson, John Cena, Dave Batista big. So at this phase in my career, going out for a big guy role is usually a characterization of a big guy. It's you know, uh, a tough guy, a prison inmate, drug dealer, enforcer, um, sweaty lumberjack, you know, it, they want the physically imposing and menacing body to have a matching menacing face. And some of the feedback that I've got is that I have more of a leading man looking face and it contrasts my body. Um, however, I know there's a point to where you get so big it doesn't matter so much what your face looks like. They know where to place you. You are that big dude. You're going down that action lane. Um, and so I want to really like lean into that. Um, I'm generally not big enough for the, the big, big guy roles and the big leads, um, but I'm too big for being a leading man. And um, I don't really have an interest in going down being, you know, a romantic leading man, rom-com guy. Like I, I want to entertain in a big way. There's nothing wrong with that. I just want to have big action and big laughs and be part of what I deem the big five in Hollywood, which is these small group of big guys that can actually act. And that's such a rare small group. I'm talking about guys, you know, near 250 or past 250. That's Dwayne Johnson, John Cena, Dave Bautista, um, Terry Crews. And so I want to lump myself in there because those guys are stars. They're going to be booked up a lot of the time. And if I can really niche myself down and rebrand myself within Hollywood as one of those dudes next up, uh, I can get myself a lot more work and uh, do what I love at a higher level. So um, a lot of this process is going to start with that. And it's going to start, you know, with the physical of really putting on that size and showing you exactly what that looks like from my starting point uh, of, of rebranding myself as, as one of these one of these big action men. I want casting directors and producers, directors to be able to see me and know, okay, I know exactly what to do with him. Like that's, that's very specific. We got this, let's, let's throw him in this role. Um, and so to know where I'm going, I got to know where I'm at. I got to take all these measurements. So I'm going to take you to some clips that I shot this morning to get a more accurate morning weight. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll measure it along the way and take some progress. So Go after your goals. You got this. Let's do it together. Have fun with this process. This is my wife, Jenna. She's amazing. So like right under the armpits and then connect it in there. I'm going to take all these measurements first, see what the starting point is. Um, should be a pretty interesting, what is that? 50. 50. Show to the camera. So 50 inches on the chest to start with. It's actually bigger than I thought it would be. That's what she said. Not to me. <laughs> uh, oh, and we gotta go around the shoulders too. So it should be a pretty interesting um, <clears throat> transformation because I haven't worked out in about a month and a half, I guess consistently, because, um, oh, it's falling down over here. There we go. My 
best friend, one of my lifelong best friends and childhood best friend just died uh, about a month-ish ago when I was sick before that. So it's been about a month and a half. Um, all right, what's that say? Four inches around the shoulders. Okay. Um, I think we did that right ish. Um, <clears throat> thank you, babe, for the actually for the next measurement. We're gonna need like the super, super long one. So, do you mind real quick? Just... I got okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Been kissing those lips since 16. What's up, girl? She kissed me first. Um, so, um, I'm getting all these measurements. I'm usually about 230 pounds, um, but I want to get back to my NFL weight, which was on average about 240, maybe start the season around 245, and then, you know, depending on the year or injuries or um, whatever, sometimes I drop down to 235. Um, so, I want to get back to 240, but leaner than when I was playing football, so therefore more muscle mass than I've ever had. Yeah, 30, 34 and 5 eighths. All right, my calves are at, uh, you won't be able to see it, but it's, uh, just over 16 and a quarter is where my start is on the calves. What do we got there? A little over what is that 17 5 eighths yeah okay pencil neck 17 and a quarter uh, football is much more performance based and that was my background I played uh, three years in the NFL four by technicality injured um, but we didn't really care about a lot of the bodybuilding lifts it was all you know heavy bench heavy squat powerlifting type stuff and then some accessory work but the accessory work was more performance based, you know, plyometrics, um, full power type things, um, some, some Olympic movements. Um, so when I got out of playing football, my arms were like 16 inches, even though I was 245 pounds. So in film, it's a lot more aesthetics based. Um, so I've had to put more emphasis on my arms, my neck, my calves. The shirts and shorts muscles, the stuff that'll actually show on film, uh, the shoulders, and um, so that's the stuff that I want to measure starting out because <clears throat> what you measure grows, and what you measure and report grows exponentially. So I'm going to keep uh, reporting the progress to you, and uh, hopefully I'll get great results from it. So with those measurements, those are the main measurements I'm going to track. I want to get to 240 pounds, like I mentioned, back to my NFL weight, uh, but leaner. So this will be the biggest that I've ever been. I want to do this by the end of 2024. And I want to be rocking on dubs, 20 inch arms. I want to be gaining two inches on the calves. So I'd need to get to 18s on the calves. And I want to get an inch on the neck, 18 on the neck. Why neck, you ask? Well, uh, neck shows up a lot on film, you know, in those close-ups. And if you got this big body and a pencil neck, it looks weird, even if you're not in film. So let's get the starting weight. It's the morning time. All I've had today was a cup of coffee. Uh, but I took a dump, so maybe that cancels it out, you know? See that? Two, two twenty four, two twenty three point eight. Let me see it. Two twenty three point eight. All right. Yeah, let's try to get this to lock in on me. So, like I said, I haven't worked out in about a month and a half, and I haven't been on top of my diet, especially lately. So. Not only have I lost weight, um, but I've put on a little fat too. So initially I'll probably have to trim some of that fat off and then I want to main gain it from there, meaning I want to uh, gain weight to that 240 pounds but stay at the same body fat percentage. So that's why I'm going to take a few 
uh, caliper measurements. I don't follow um, the advice that this set came with because it says I'm like 5% body fat when I do it, which is clearly not true. Uh, but I just know for myself, I put on fat mostly in this back region and mostly above the belly button and around it. So those are the two measurements that are most accurate for me to track whether I'm gaining fat or losing fat. So let's see. I just need to take a good little pinch right here. And take a couple measurements in case they're very off. No, 13. So 13 on the back fat and take a good pinch of this here above the belly button. I'm looking at a seven. Try it again. Seven. Side of the belly button here. A little over six. Same thing. All right. I think that's everything. All right, so it's December 19th, 2023. 223.8 pounds in the morning, uh, 17 and 5 eighths arms, 16 and a quarter on the calves, 17 and a quarter on the neck, 34 and a half inch waist. So by the end of 2024, the physical goals are to be 240 pounds and a little leaner than I am right now, 20 inch pipes rolling on dubs, uh, 18 on the calves, 18 on the neck. Let's do this. Oh yeah, did I mention I'm doing this natural? All right, here we go. Time to get this lift. I'm here in my uh, garage gym. I'll give you a formal tour another time as if there's much to see. You're looking at it. Um, it's colder than a witch's tit in here, which is why I gotta wear this extra sweatshirt. But I kinda like embracing the elements in Nashville out here. I didn't put one of those heater cooler units into the wall because you got to work extra hard to earn uh, your sweat and get that blood flowing. And then uh, in the summertime, it's like a built-in sauna. So hopefully I'm getting those benefits. But this is my first like real workout in uh, like a month and a half. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my best friend uh, throughout most of my life died um, about that time ago. And so uh, that's been a tragedy. First thing to go was working out. But I'm going to get back into it. And... I'm gonna just jump right back into kind of where I was on my program, which I'm curious to see if it crushes me going with those weights in this low rep scheme that I was into at that point. Uh, but it'll be a good litmus test, you know, see how much um, strength I've lost. So I've definitely lost size, um, was just not eating enough and just eating what you do when you're not focused on eating right, the standard American diet. It's funny what happens, you, uh, you lose muscle mass and you gain fat. So that's fun. Um, so we'll see if these weights crush me and feel like lead or if my muscle memory kicks in that quick. All right, so I'm at my first uh, working set here. I definitely am not gonna go as heavy as my usual sets. Uh, my warm ups felt like lead. So I'm gonna hit this uh, right here for three reps and should be able to have two in the tank. At least that's the idea. We'll see how this goes. <clears throat> I don't know about two in the tank, maybe one, one and a half. Yeah, so not always fun to get humbled by weights you're used to uh, throwing around like a wet noodle. So uh, generally my, my split, at least right now, I change it a lot, but right now I do two upper body days and two lower body days per week. Um, and sometimes I'll do like a fifth day and it's just kind of an odds and ends, like pump day, stuff I want to get extra work on, like my calves or forearms, arms, uh, neck, whatever. Um, and some things I'll, I'll mix some extra volume in on certain body parts I may even do every day. Uh, but generally, 
lift hard and heavy, push yourself and track your compound lifts, and then do a few auxiliary lifts uh, for that same muscle group outside of it. Push those, do some high volume, some low volume, play with the weights, just push it every day. And if you push it hard, you lift heavy, you sprint fast, you jump as high as you, if you give your full effort, you're gonna make gains, but make sure you're eating enough. Um, that's for another time. I'll, I'll, I'll share more with you as I go. Um, but today I'm gonna, usually I'm prioritizing my arms because my arms need to catch up with the rest of my physique. Um, and that's the emphasis, but it's not gonna get in the way of, of, uh, of bench, man. You know, that's every football player's favorite lift, most of them. So the chest is important. Uh, I'm gonna do that and then head to the biceps and then hit the rest of it. Uh, I'll just hit the set real quick. <clears throat> Just in the weights between sets, based on how the last one felt. Uh, felt like I could have gone, I could go up a little bit since the last one. It's supposed to be three with, you know, three left in the tank. More or less. All right, doing some easy bar curls today. So warming up a little bit with the bar. I like easy bar curls because they feel better on my arms than just regular barbell bicep curls. Um, and it's a good way to just load it up, get the most bang for your buck on your biceps and also for your wallet because I invested in this easy bar curl. So I'm gonna use it. That's actually probably a bigger reason why I use it than I'd like to admit, but I can rack it, which is nice and really load it up. Uh, uh, all right 10 reps i might have been able to squeeze two more out of that maybe i'm going to take that same weight and superset it into some easy bar skull crushers because they are opposite muscle groups. I don't think I'm gonna fatigue the performance on one over the other just by doing this in between. <clears throat> learning this whole uh, content thing on the fly, playing with different angles. So some of this might look odd, but you gotta see what works. Also, my audio might be awful. I haven't really tested that too much. Uh, uh, uh. 
All right, I gotta start supersetting because I gotta pick up the kids soon. So I'm gonna do some weighted pull-ups. I got four sets of four uh, to some dumbbell lateral raises. What? Here we go. Ah. 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 I already know I'm going to be sore because you know when you haven't worked out in a while and uh, in the middle of your workout you start getting that kind of pinchy type soreness almost like you're going to cramp it's a good sign that you're out of shape and haven't worked out in a while and you're going to be torched tomorrow so that'll be fun oh. I love doing lateral raises. I don't really do anything shoulder-wise outside of lateral raises because it is the best um, side belt builder, I think. At least I got some newbie gains out of it after football because we don't program a lot of that in a lot of bodybuilding work. It's not aesthetic, it's performance-based. So a lot of football players have underdeveloped um, side and rear delts. Uh, my rear del delts are covered because I get one to two working sets in my uh, warm-up every upper body day, doing face pulls, band pull-aparts. And then for my prehab stuff, I'll do um, weighted external rotations, keeps my shoulders healthy. I don't wanna do a lot of overhead pressing and really heavy compound movements on the shoulders because I got a 70% 70, 70 torn labrum on my left, uh, partially torn rotator cuff on my right. And I'm mostly asymptomatic because of all the prehab work I do, but I don't want to risk it by going super heavy. So it's nice to have a really like uh, low stressor on your central nervous system. I, I could do lateral raises every day to failure and probably rarely ever feel soreness, but see that my, my delts are getting bigger. So that's rad. All right, let's set up pull-ups. All right, I gotta move fast. I got like a few more minutes. I got four sets of these uh, presses. Uh, here we go. And uh, two sets of uh, seated row. Damn, that's uneven. Uh, go with it. Uh, uh, killing perfectionism this year. So I'm learning on the fly. Uh, trying to uh, learn to be less verbose. Just to say the least amount of words that carry the most weight. Uh, and work hard. Here we go. Uh, uh, Huh. 
All right, I don't know how to do cool flexes. I can do that one though. All right, on my way to go pick up my kiddos. Um, successful first lift, I guess. Uh, got a good uh, pump, was definitely a lot weaker. Uh, my muscles definitely already feel kind of, again, that stingy sore that you get immediately after working out and it's been a while. So uh, I know that my body will adapt to the stimulus that's good so I'm on my way the genesis of the journey to the action star let's go get these kids how was school buddy Them? yeah what'd you learn about you got that? <laughs> it's a new camera bub you like it yeah we can get a lot of footage from that sup sissy It's a video. <laughs> hey, Sissy. You were giving Brielle huggies. You want to give her hugs? Yeah. Oh, let's give her a hug. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, no, Sissy. Can I have a kiss? Hmm? You tooted? <laughs> you tooted? I wanted kisses. You gave me toots? Ew. <laughs> I don't know, but she she pushed it out. Ooh, I felt that. <laughs> you felt it too from there. It really must have been a royal rumble. Bobby and Daddy and Daddy and Bobby, yeah, Bobby and Daddy and a Daddy and a Bobby and a Sis. What, what, well, what's up, Sissy? You kind of wobbly, but we love that Missy. Yeah. Sissy baby, don't you know your daddy loves you? It's true. And Bobby does too. Sissy baby. It's time for you to go to sleep. And you too. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. All right. Let's do this, y'all. Let's get you in your beds. 